tonight, a new study raising the possibility of another cause of CTE, the degenerative brain disease that's been found in the brains of hundreds of deceased NFL players. National correspondent Axel Tercios has a story tonight from New York. Doctors and advanced researchers have long thought that the number of concussions suffered by athletes increased their likelihood of being diagnosed with the degenerative brain disease CTE, a disease only officially diagnosed after death. The brain disease has been discovered in the brains of more than 370 former NFL players, including some of the game's greats. But a new Harvard study says concussions are not the biggest factor when it comes to developing CTE. Instead, it can occur with repeated hits to the head, whether concussive or not. The problem is when we're talking about CTE risk with the NFL players, their exposure didn't all happen at the NFL level. Their exposure happened throughout their entire lives in the decade or more uh, before they ended up uh, participating in the NFL. Dr. Dan Danishvar, an assistant professor at Harvard Medical School, was the lead author of the study. He says the majority of forceful head hits suffered by football players aren't even happening during the game. Over two-thirds of head impacts uh, for a football player occur in practice, typically. And so if we eliminate half of the, of the head impacts that occur in practices, based on just eliminating those practices, no change to the game at all, we could decrease the risk of CTE for an average, say, offensive lineman by about 50 percent over eight years. The study used 20 years of data from football helmet sensors, estimating the cumulative impact of hits on more than 600 former football players who donated their brains to Boston University. The research found that linemen were more prone to developing CTE than players at any other position. Despite experiencing less forceful hits, both offensive and defensive linemen experienced the most total G-force impact each season due to the sheer number of hits they endured. We also know from helmet sensor studies that for every concussion that a football player gets, they get upwards of 334 head impacts that are of stronger intensity, of more force than a head impact that results in a concussion. You have concerns because, you know, you, you know the, how violent the sport is. You know the type of hits you took. Former NFL running back Doug Chapman knows the perils that come with playing the sport. Chapman was a standout running back at Marshall University and played five years in the NFL. Players may only remember that one hit but they forget the 47 hits that led up to that concussion. Chapman only remembers parts of one of the biggest hits he says he took during his career. I remember the guy that hit me, and I remember where we were, and I remember the aftermath. It was my college and pro teammate, Randy Moss, standing over top of me with his hand out. And he's like, man, you straight? You straight? And I had no idea where I was. I had no idea how I got there. I just remember look, looking down at my jersey and it was just covered in blood in the front. That man, now the director of player development for Marshall University's football team, says safety is a top priority for him as he watches his student athletes. A lot of our staff has not just been around a lot of football. You know, we've played football. We have four members of our staff that played in the NFL. And so, you know, when you have that many eyes that have seen so much of the game, you know, we're very proactive with watching our guys when they take big shots, watching their body language, um, how they got up, how they reacted on the sideline. The goal now, Dr. Danishor says, is reducing the number of hits and their impacts. New advanced technology helps that effort. More professional and college football players are wearing the Q collar. The first and only FDA-approved neck device that protects the brain during repetitive head blows. The NFL is also recommending the expanded use of a soft shell helmet cover to increase the protection of players during practices and off-season training. For youth football leagues, including Pub Warner, many coaches have eliminated tackling during practices. Chapman says leagues across all sports need to do a better job protecting athletes. The sports themselves that make so much money off of the brand need to protect those players that help build its brand. Axel Tercios, Scripps News.